god förmiddag. Härligt väder ute i alla fall här i Stockholm. Men vad är ett bättre sätt att tillbringa den här förmiddagen på än att följa småbolagsdagarna i Stockholm? Uh, it's time for me to say a warm welcome to the, pre- the CEO of Aspire Global, uh, Sachi Ta- Maimon. How are you, Sachi? Hi, Linda. How are you? I'm fine. Where are you at the moment? Currently, I'm in Israel. My wife just uh, gave uh, birth to, to my third son. So, uh, oh my God! <laughs> I would like so much to, to hear the details about this. I hope everything went well. Yes. Very yeah. Good. Thank okay. You very much. Congratulations. Unfortunately, we won't have time to discuss your new <laughs> assets, <laughs> but uh, I look forward to your presentation of Aspire Global. Please, Saji, the stage is yours or the screen. So, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, you see my screen or not yet? Uh, not yet. So I will share it right now. Um, now you see my screen, I hope. Um, okay. Thank you very much. So uh, thanks again uh, to uh, for having me into this uh, conference and uh, to have the ability to explain more about Aspire Global. Um, I'm sure that uh, not all of you Um, are familiar with Aspire Global, so I will have a little bit of introduction and then I will move forward um, so you will see what Aspire Global is aiming to be in the gaming business. So Aspire Global is the leading supplier in the iGaming. We are offering uh, to companies um, everything they need in order to operate a successful iGaming brand, whether it's casino, bingo or sport. The company grew a lot throughout uh, the last uh, few years, founded in 2005, so it's not a startup, um, more than 300 employees. And just to uh, represent a snapshot uh, of our performance uh, in 2019, it was uh, a revenue of more than 130 million euro and uh, an EBITDA of 21.7. This uh, represented a double digit growth um, from 2018 to 2019 of uh, 26%. So the company is uh, growing. Uh, This is uh, the group offering. So what do we have? In our uh, group, we have several products that we are selling in the iGaming. We have our own PAM, the platform, Um, we have Games Hub, aggregation of games where we are reselling games of other providers. We also have our own proprietary studio and games that we are selling it directly to uh, operators. And we have operational services to companies that uh, don't have the knowledge to manage an online brand. Currently, Aspire Global Group has um, more than 80 operators or paying customers to the services that uh, we are selling. This is a big uh, growth from uh, last year where we had only 40 clients, not only, but we had 40. So we doubled our um, operators partners uh, that are buying our products. This is our business model. So we are selling PAM. This is the platform. We are selling the games and Games Hub. We are able to sell each one of those products independently or as a full package. But anyway, it doesn't matter how we sell it. The pricing model is a very attractive one for uh, the partners, which is based on a revenue share model. So only if they are growing and generating income, we are having our share out of it. So as I said before, Aspire Global is... uh, not a, a startup. Every step, every decision that we have throughout uh, our history, we are doing it when we are looking five, seven, ten years ahead. So uh, we will talk today about 2025, and this is where we are looking at today on every decision, small and big decision, we are looking on 2025. But in order to understand 2025 here, Okay, five years from now, let's understand a little bit what is the status today. So today, the online gaming represents only 12% of the overall 
gaming transaction, land-based and online. So today, the online represents only 12%. Today, we experience in the industry tough regulations. It's not easy. Sweden is being regulated, the UK, Denmark, country after country. And it brings a little bit of the challenges. Everything that is new is a little bit more uh, difficult to adjust. Today, there are a lot of operators and suppliers in the gaming industry. So those elements bringing the performance today to have in the gaming sector, lower margins of profitability than you or we used to have in the gaming sector a few years ago. Now, let's jump to 2025. Five years from now, how Aspire Global are analyzing um, the business or the industry. So first, we will see a lot of more consolidation of businesses. Companies will buy companies in order to gain volume. But not only consolidation of businesses, we will see consolidations of product because of the heavy weight of the cost of the different suppliers that you need to pay in the gaming. So we will see companies buying other products in order to own it and not to pay outside. So we will see a lot of consolidations of products. The regulation will not be a new thing. It will be a fact already and more and more markets will be regulated. So it will not be something that will catch us as a surprise. <clears throat> the online gaming will almost double itself from the 12% that we saw before. So the online gaming in the world will jump in to be around 20%. And this is even without taking into consideration the COVID-19 that we experienced, where we uh, see that a lot of land-based uh, casinos want to move online much faster. So I suspect that this number will be even higher. So all of those uh, elements will bring to higher margins in the gaming sector. And this is of course, very good news to the gaming companies. So what needs to be done in order to win 2025? Because there is a race, a lot of companies want to win 2025. To uh, some of you that are following Aspire Global, in the annual report, we are uh, mentioning every year, it's not new <clears throat> for the last few years, what is our growth strategy? We believe that in order to grow, we need to have four elements. One is organic growth. It means that the business is healthy and is able to grow alone without an extra external revenue. We believe that in order to grow, we need to do some m and We need we think that in order to grow one of the initiatives, it's also to broader our offering and offer more than casino. And so as long as we will offer more and more products, we believe that we will grow throughout that. And of course, a geographic expansion. If we will open more and more markets and jurisdictions, this will lead to our operators and partners to operate in more jurisdictions, and of course, to have another income stream uh, in their business. So those are the four growth initiatives that we have. I will zoom in on each one of them in order to show you where Aspire Global is currently. So we'll start with the organic growth. Aspire Global uh, pro prove uh, in the last few years that we are growing organically year over year. You can see an example of the last four years from 2016 of 60 million euro revenue to almost 72 million in 2017. Then in 2018, we ended it with almost 105 million euro. And we ended 2019 with 131 million euro. So you can see that organically, the company is growing double digit numbers year over year, organically. So there is an healthy business uh, that we are managing. And uh, we believe that this is uh, a core 
to continue and uh, grow. I will move to the second initiative of our growth strategy, which is the M&A. So we did our first M&A in October 2019. We acquired Pariplay. I will share a little bit what is it, Pariplay. So we bought it in October 2019. The total uh, consideration of the purchase was 13.3 million euro. Aspire now own 100% of uh, Pariplay. Right after the acquisition, we uh, appointed Jasper Carbink as the chairman of Pariplay. You're probably uh, familiar with Jasper. Jasper is uh, the ex CEO of uh, the successful brand Mr. Green and Venskaspel. And already we can see that uh, how much he is contributing to Pariplay and to the group, of course. So this is the first M&A that we did. What did M&A, this M&A um, contributed to Aspire Global? It contributed the following items. And this is something that uh, also in the growth strategy, Pariplay strengthened the Aspire Global offering. Today with Pariplay, Aspire Global is able to offer two very important products in the gaming sector. One is that they have their own studio of games. They are producing more than two games per month. They have right now more than 100 proprietary games that they are selling to different operators around the world. And in addition to their own games, they are also acting as an aggregation. They have a product called Fusion, and they are already connected to most of the important providers in the world, and they are able to resell those products to operators through one single integration through this a very advanced uh, system that they built. I can say proudly that Fusion is one of the leading aggregators in the world. And this is something that those two elements brought Aspire Global to a different and strengthened uh, our offering. So now we have additional income stream that will come to the group through those two verticals. I will move now to the last initiative of our growth strategy, which is the geographic <clears throat> expansion. Look at this screen. Aspire Global before Pariplay we're able to operate with our certifications of our product in different jurisdictions, in Sweden, Denmark, in Malta, which means Europe, UK, Ireland, and Portugal, all of those regulated markets. Now, the Aspire Group is able to offer its product in additional jurisdictions in Gibraltar, Romania, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, and of course, the golden point is the US market. We already signed at least one contract in each and every jurisdiction that you see here. So what it gave us, not only the M&A of a very strong technology and product that we added to the Aspire Group, we are now also able to offer it in different jurisdictions. And now Aspire Global Group is existing and present in a lot of more jurisdictions than uh, before, which means more income to our partners through those uh, jurisdictions. So this is uh, our way to 2025. Um, currently we own those products, our own proprietary products, those services and products that you see here are in gray because we aim to continue and acquire companies in order to be able to broader our um, position and products in the gaming sector and to be able to offer our products to much more operators and partners around the world, more than the 80 that uh, we currently have. And as you see, we have very strong tier one clients buying services and products from Aspire Global. And this is something that we aim to continue and grow. 
This is the vision of Aspire Global. This is the reason for us to wake up every morning. Everything we do, we do to enable our partners to achieve their full potential. All the products that we acquire, all the services that we are providing, this is only to make sure that our partners will be able to be profitable and to have an attractive offering to their players. In this uh, presentation, we cannot end it without some numbers. So I just uh, put here the Q1 highlights of the group. We ended it with uh, 33.7 million euro in revenues, representing a 4.6% increase over Q4 2019. Also, when we zoom in on the B2B revenues, it ended with a 6.7% increase from Q4 2019. The B2B of the group was a 5.2, almost 20% increase from Q4. And only the B2B EBITDA was 3.8 million, also here representing quarter over quarter of growth of 10%. It's an unusual situation that Aspire Global through the world is experiencing with the COVID-19. And because of this unique situation, what we decided to do in Q1 report is also to share the performance of the first month of the quarter of April. What we saw uh, through the COVID-19 is uh, after the land based were needed to shut down, we saw a lot of players that are looking for their entertainment online. We are happy to see that Aspire Global through all of its range of products were able to attract uh, those players to come to the operators that are using our products. And what we saw in uh, April, is that the month ended with a 20% higher revenue than the average monthly of uh, Q1. And uh, it represented the 13.5 million euro uh, only in April. And so we are uh, uh, satisfied to see that when players are looking for an online entertainment as a replacement for their land base, uh, the products that we are selling appealing uh, to them and they can find their uh, enjoying time with our product. And that's all uh, from me. Uh, and I am now open for Q&A. And I hope that uh, it was a, a fruitful experience to see what Aspire Global want to be in 2025. Thank you so much. Yes, it was a fantastic presentation. However, I have a few questions I would like to ask. Uh, first of all, let's talk COVID. Uh, unfortunately, this is where we are at now. Uh, as you mentioned, you had a strong growth from Q4 to Q1, and April is looking even stronger with an increase of 20% compared to the average uh, in uh, Q1 uh, this year. How much of this growth in April would you say is uh, related to uh, COVID-19? So uh, we can see that there is um, a, a contribution from the COVID-19, uh, but we can certainly also see that uh, uh, the existing players that we have, uh, because of the products that we were able uh, to improve and uh, uh, to uh, work on them a lot, throughout the last uh, two years, um, also create its stickiness to the players and uh, they are using it more and more. Um, so yes, there is a contribution from COVID-19, uh, but not all. Okay. Uh, you are operating in the B2B uh, sector and also in the B2C sector. Uh, in, within the B2B platform, you have a new structure. Could you uh, elaborate a little bit on the main objective of this new um, formulation of uh, the B2B core platform? So uh, it's a very good point because uh, we didn't uh, even started to market it worldwide. We have a plan to do a very strong uh, rebranding and remarketing of our platform. Uh, and we are aiming uh, not 
to focus only or mainly in the medium level uh, operators. And uh, we want to take the platform because of the strength uh, of uh, what we have also to uh, offer it and to have an expansion to tier one, tier two operators. And this is something that uh, we will start uh, working uh, more and more in the coming period uh, to have the ability to offer the platform to a broader audience and uh, not mainly to the small, medium tier. So to the, you're operators. aiming for the bigger players, for the bigger actors, that is. Yes, because um. we saw that uh, throughout the last years, Aspire certainly is probably the number one company uh, for the small, medium. We probably own this segment. Uh, we will not leave it. We believe that uh, this is our bread and butter. We do it very good, but we will expand. Okay. Uh, looking at the B2C operations, however, they are uh, decreasing. Uh, they decreased with, uh, by 20% in uh, Q1. Uh, what is your plan going forward here? And uh, well, what are your plans for this segment? So the B2C had uh, some challenges in the last uh, six months um, because of a different regulatory uh, adjustment that the B2C needed to do. Um, and this is something that uh, we see it as a temporary. Because as I said, also in the B2C, we are looking five years ahead. And when you look five years ahead, you can have challenging times and you can have better and worse uh, quarters. The B2C is a little bit more volatile than the B2B. Uh, but this is something that uh, we are happy to say already. In August last year, the Q1 will be like a lowest position. And from there, we will grow. And uh, I'm happy that April uh, was a very uh, um, is a point to mention that as we did in the report that it already started its uh, turning point. Okay, thank you. You talked a little bit about Periplay during your presentation. Uh, you were actually financially financially prepared for acquisitions for quite uh, some time, and the market was waiting and waiting. When will we see some acquisition? And finally, uh, you came up with uh, uh, your first bigger acquisition, uh, that was Periplay, the game studio Periplay. So was it worth the waiting <laughs> to begin with? It's a very good point, you know, because sometimes in the investment uh, market, there is uh, a need to do some fast actions in order to show that you are doing what you promised. But then after you're doing it, you feel that maybe the acquisition or the culture of what you acquired is not exactly what you looked for. And the technology is not exactly what you looked for. So it was a long birth that we had, but I'm so happy to see that it was a perfect match. We are together less than seven, eight months and we already see the synergies and we already see the contribution of one company yeah, to another. You seem, you seem very happy with this. Could you just give me what are the main advantages of uh, having uh, uh, Periplay on board? Only two. There are several, but only two <laughs> yeah. is that first, we are able to offer our products in the US market and in places that we were not able to be before. And we are doing it with tier one operators. Triple eight is only one of them. Mm. And GVC and others that are using it. This is one thing. Second, it gives us the option to cost saving a lot of the expenses that Aspire Global paid to other third party uh, providers. And now we are paying it internally. So we have an interest to have power play growing because everything is being paid internally. Yeah. Uh, so everything stayed mm. in the company. Thank you. And uh, for Powerplay, you appointed uh, Mr. Jesper Scherbrink, quite known to the Swedish uh, market. He was a former CEO of uh, Svenska Spel and also of uh, Mr. Green. Uh, what is your expectations? Uh, what will he? Con what is? What will be his contributions to Powerplay and to the to your group? So Jesper and me are known to each other for more than four or five years. And when I saw and we saw what he did with Mr. Green and the way that he took it from the position that they had and took it forward, he's a very creative person, he's a strong managerial uh, experience. And we see already today with the way he thinks, how he's contributing to the strategy of Play, uh, is uh, 
being with us in the management and with the board and with Adrian, the managing director. And so also on a personal level, he's contributing a lot and also professional. Um, he has a lot of ideas that we didn't think before. So okay. uh, we will see some of it outside. Yeah. Are you ready to on. share any of his contributions already? Or? Uh, no, because we are happy to keep him for ourselves. Okay, okay. I'll leave you with that. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's talk a little bit more about your M&A uh, agenda. It's still active, I understand. Uh, what, could, what are you looking for now? Yes, we still have money in our uh, bank account and we are looking to expand our uh, portfolio of products. Uh, we have some uh, companies that we are looking our eyes on, uh, but uh, the main focus is uh, sport vertical. We understand that this is the biggest vertical in uh, the majority of the market, yeah. and we aim to tackle this uh, vertical as well. Thank you. Uh, well, we uh, must definitely talk about the, one of the big things, at least at the iGaming market here in Sweden, it's the new um, uh, the new propositions from uh, our uh, iGaming uh, uh, minister, and that is our Mr. Ardalan Chekarabi. I guess you've heard about it, yeah. Yep. Uh, as you know, he's uh, he wants to have a lower uh, limit limits on bets in Sweden. They want to be five thousand Swedish crowns a week for casino uh, gaming. Uh, comment. Um, we knew in the beginning of 2019 that uh, the way the Swedish uh, regulator is uh, acting is uh, will be volatile in the first two years. And we said and decided a difficult decision to step aside, be on a hold, freezing uh, position in Sweden. And this is why uh, we have less than 1% currently in our income from Sweden. We understand that there are political interests a lot, and we are happy not to be part of it okay. and to be affected so, of it, uh, at this time. What you're saying more or less that you don't care that much about what happens in the Swedish market or? In the coming months, no. Mm. But in the long uh, term, yes, of course, because this is a market that will be very important to aspire. Okay, thank you. Uh, some other news uh, affecting you more, perhaps, is that uh, you, I, I was a bit surprised, I saw that you were included in an ETF, uh, Exchange Traded Fund, uh, uh, founded by Roundhill Investment. Uh, uh, is this something that will affect you in the long run, would you say? Um, we had uh, several discussions with them in the last uh, few weeks. They wanted to know more about the company, about the strategy, and uh, they told us about what they're aiming to do in the gaming sector. And uh, we are happy to see that uh, we are one of their uh, interested uh, yeah. companies. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we think that it's a good move. Yeah, it's, it's quite new. It was just founded uh, in the beginning of uh, April. So we'll see what happens. Uh, ETF is an exciting market. But, uh, well, what will you do in the near future, except of, I think, I'm sure taking care of your family and your newborn. Um, it's again, congratulations from uh, from uh, us here. But uh, leaving the family aside for a moment, what is your main uh, priority for Aspire right now? To continue and build the group. It's not only a company right now, it's a group that is being built on more and more verticals, companies, daughter companies, and to build a structure that we will be able to uh, conquer the world. This is what we are focusing right now on the managerial structure, on the synergies, on the structure of the whole group. And uh, this is something that uh, uh, also with the M&A opportunities out there, this is what uh, I'm working on. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Sashi Maimon, uh, CEO of Aspire Global Group. And uh, good luck and thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you very much, Thank Linda, you. and Bye. the audience. Bye. Thank Bye. you.